Hello, and welcome to Path to the Sky. Uh, kind of action, kind of roguelike, kind of platformer game. Um, words that I've said way too many times at the start of these videos, so you probably know the score by now. But uh, it's still in early access. I was looking forward to it for quite some time. I've been following the development of it um, on Twitter. And it's... It's really charming. I meant to make this game. I meant to make this video quite a while ago, um, and my enthusiasm for the game kind of waned, as often is the case with early access games. Um, but I decided I want to make this video anyway, kind of partly just to, as a completionist thing, um, because it had been on my mind, and also because I think uh, there's there's some interesting stuff to talk about here, as there is with uh, a lot of games. Um, but particularly relevant to the kinds of topics that I'm interested in and the kind of games I talk about. So, first of all, um, as you can see, it's a 2D game. It's got pixel art. It's got uh, not exactly chiptune music, maybe more of a Fez vibe going on with the music, which you can hopefully hear. Um, you play this kind of vaguely heroic looking archer dude. Um, he's got a bow and a shield, which are pretty good video gamey things to have. Um, and. I think it's got a really weird plot. I think in the plot you you crash, you, you're, you're piloting a ship in the Indian Ocean which crashes and you f discover this floating island. Um, I just thought it was set in a fantasy world which would have made a lot more sense. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently you're shipwrecked in the Indian Ocean and you find a world populated by murderous uh, birds. Um, so obviously you go and uh, murder all of them. Um, so the game takes place in these kind of chambers, so you can see I walked into this chamber here and I, I killed a bunch of its inhabitants. Um, and if I move up into other rooms, like this one up here, uh, new enemies will spawn. Um, and when I defeat them, the, the kind of the, the exits and entrances to this room lock, and then when you defeat them they unlock again. Um, and I like the little labelling on the doors, so you can see the, the door in the bottom right here has a skull on it, which means if I go through there'll be combat, I think, whereas this room here does not have a skull, so I believe if I go through it's not a combat dungeon. Um, I could be wrong about that. So what I'm actually going to do is, for now, I'm going to go back down to the room I just left because I want to show you outside. So this game has a lot of similarities. It owes a lot to um, a lot of the kind of popular indie roguelikes that have come out over the last few years. Um, most notably, I'd say, its influence is The Binding of Isaac. So obviously the idea of locking um, the player into encounters and not allowing them to exit until those encounters are done is very Binding of Isaac-esque. You'll also see when I pick up items later that they use a similar kind of charge system um, where the number of uses you get in an item um, is based on the number of rooms that you've cleared, um, which is a great mechanic. Like, I'm glad they used it, actually. I really like it. I think it works here really well. Ooh, I've fallen down. I'm going to swim all the way back. Um, and as I'm spawning in these rooms, you'll see that different kinds of birds are spawning, and they have different sorts of properties. So some of them are big, some of them are small, some of them follow you, some of them run away from you, some of them fire homing missiles, some of them fire other birds. Um, which is also a very Binding of Isaac-esque thing, where there were kind of some templates for what enemies did, but most of the time what you were fighting was combinations of these templates. So this is a very tiny bird that I'm shooting here. This thing here is a much bigger one, and I think it fires bullets in a kind of strange pattern, if I can even get close to it. Um, I thought they'd fix this, actually. Ah, there we go. So... So the game is all like laser, laser focused on this loop of. Uh, actually, I'm going to unlock this door here to get a chest. Um, of, of entering rooms, killing whatever's in the room, um, grabbing stuff like uh, random potions and uh, scrolls. Actually, what is this potion I've got now? Uh, heals for two HP. That's actually really good. But I think this scroll of relocation probably is going to teleport me somewhere. So I'm just going to leave that here. So the game's pretty focused in on this loop of going into rooms, killing the stuff in the rooms, and I actually, I, I like, I like a lot of it. Um, for starters, the game is astonishingly beautiful to look at and to listen to. I think the music is incredible. Um, there are these beautiful incidental sound effects of things like seagulls crying out, which, um, you know, I I love the sea. Uh, if you put seagulls in your game, I'm probably going to like it more. Um, which it's not a great justification, but there you are. And it's just a, it's just a very peaceful game, even though it's mostly about um, killing birds, which you know might not sound like a very a very peaceful game experience, but it is a very relaxing game to play. Um, but it's interesting that even though it's um, it borrows a lot from 
a game that I really like, which is The Binding of Isaac, and a, a game that has really solid um, game mechanics. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff that doesn't work here as well, um, one of which is the bosses, um, of which this is one. Now, I've seen the trailer for this game, and, like, I've watched the trailer dude fight this boss, um, and there are ways to fight it without taking any damage, but I find it so hard and really not enjoyable at all. So you can block with your shield, you can block uh, three hits with the basic shield. Um, but the block takes a while to recharge. So you see I blocked two hits there, and I only had one block left by the time the next bullet hit me. Um, I'll piss off. So even though I can kind of dance around this bullet hell thing, I find that I take more damage doing it than just standing in a spot and occasionally blocking him. Um, which is not great. Obviously, if I was going to get super good at the game, I'd probably practice it a bit more. Um, but it's just... it's. I haven't found it satisfying to do, really. Um, the things that I, I really like about the game are the regular encounters with people. Um, let's just get one of our prizes. Squid Anchor. A weird artifact from the depths. No human made this. So something I've later realised is that you can actually examine the items that you pick up um, to give you information about what they actually do. Because um, at first there was no way of figuring out what these things did. So I get uh, a chance for a spread shot and a chance for a mini nova. So these are both... Um, things that will affect my arrows as I fire them. Um, so you see sometimes my arrows split into three and sometimes they explode when they when they reach somewhere. So these encounters with um, with the birds I'm actually really enjoying. Um, and there's often like the variety in the behaviour of the birds is actually really interesting especially as you ascend to the later levels. I'll show you ascension in a minute um, but I wanted to stay on this level for a bit. Um, but the bosses are awful, and they've kind of been, they were kind of what stopped me from playing the early access version before, um, and it's been through quite a few patches before then, but uh, I still really, unfortunately, don't like them. Um, which is fine, though. They're kind of a minor part of the game. They have been what stopped me from, like, getting past the third world, because the boss in there is just, uh, I just don't know how to get past them <laughs> without having a, a very lucky set of items on me, I guess. Um, but just wandering around these floating islands and finding new items and shooting the enemies is, is still pretty nice. Um, the other problem is that even though it tries to have... it, like, it, it really throws items at you. You can see I picked up two items just from that boss encounter. Um, I've picked up like potions and charms from stuff as well. Um, but the items never seem to have the same kind of mechanical impact as they did in a game like, um, like, like Isaac, for instance. <laughs> Um, oh, I've fallen in the sea again. This is going to take forever. Um, whereas in The Binding of Isaac, picking up an item might just completely fundamentally change the way you have to play the game. Like, there's an item that just reduces your max HP to 1. Um, or there's an item that allows you to fly. Uh, or there's an item that means that you can only deal damage in a certain way uh, that means that you have to... You, you might just it might just not be possible for you to complete the game basically uh, without superhuman reflexes, but stuff like that made it interesting. Um, even though it made the game extremely unfair and unpredictable, um, whereas it feels like Path to the Sky's mechanics don't quite um, have the same flexibility, maybe, um, or at least maybe the developer just felt like that wasn't that kind of style wasn't for them um, let's see what this shop has got on sale what is this broken coconut book of alchemy so that, even though the game tells you what these things do once you pick them up uh, you you have no idea what they do when you're looking at them in a shop um, fortunately i have no gold so that makes that decision pretty easy so once you kill a boss, uh, this door opens up underneath them, um, and you can take that door up to the next level, which we're going to do now. Um, I actually found myself wanting to explore um, the levels as much as possible, which it turns out is a good strategy, because the main way the game scores you is on the number of birds that you've killed, um, which you can see, you might be able to see the number in the bottom of the screen, it's next to a skull. Um, I've currently killed 49 of them. Um, and you don't just have to kill them, you actually have to pick up the uh, item that they drop when they die. Um, I believe, anyway. So you can see the split shot's actually really good when it procs. Um, some of the some of the effects do have downsides, um, like a lot of the items do in the Binding of Isaac. So there are items that make your arrows bend, um, which can be really good for like shooting safely around corners, but it also makes it really hard to shoot anything dead on. Um, and that's kind of interesting, but... Uh, oh, there's another shop. Uh, what have we got? Book of Potions, Book of Transformation. Once again, I can't afford anything. I haven't found many uh, gold coins this game, actually. 
So yeah, that's kind of interesting, but it never it never seems to reach the same level of um, strategic interest. The other interesting thing about its combat is that um, obviously one major difference from it and the Binding of Isaac is that this is a side-on platform. So right now I have gravity pulling me down, um, which for a projectile-based game um, changes the gameplay a lot. Um, I suspect the reason that the enemies fly is because it's uh, it's easier to make the combat more interesting because you don't have to worry about them being restricted to solid ground. It also makes the AI easier as well. Um, whereas in the Binding of Isaac, because there's no gravity, the enemies can go wherever they want, um, which makes everything much easier and more interesting. But the problem is you as the player are still restricted to walking around on solid ground. You can do stuff like slide around the walls and wall jump and stuff, but um, it's it's not quite the same. And that makes the combat well it doesn't make it it doesn't make it less interesting, but I think I think because the enemies have so much more mobility than you do, you're often I'm often stuck in a position where it's the optimal um, strategy is just to hide behind a wall um, and take pot shots on them uh, over and over again. Oh, what have I just picked up? I've not seen that before. Uh, oh, okay, that's not amazing. It's just summoned some potions. That's okay. I'm just going to neck some of these potions uh, and then, yeah, that'll do. Excellent. Oh, I've, oh, I've fallen down. Okay. So this is another choice that the game made, which um, I kind of like, which is that if you fall down, you don't die, um, you just restart the level. Um, it is annoying though because it's it's super easy to fall down, especially if you're bad like me. So even though the combat kind of um, lost something in the in the addition of uh, 2D, um, sorry, in the addition of kind of a side-on perspective, um, it has gained other stuff. So by giving the player a block mechanism, um, there's kind of a I don't want to invoke Dark Souls just because the game asks you to block as well as attack. Um, but certainly, it's a very different kind of um, it's a different kind of combat to most real-time roguelikes. Real-time roguelikes are more about offense. I feel like um, if you think about games like Spelunky and Binding of Isaac, where it's more about um, dealing damage, and then if you don't want damage to be dealt to you, you kind of just run away or jump or dodge out of the way. Whereas uh, the shield is actually a major item in this game, even though I've hardly been using it because it's a bit hard to use while talking. Um, it's a lot of the game is about blocking at the right time, and you can get shields that have very interesting uh, effects that trigger when you um, when you make a block. Um, in the last game, I had a shield that uh, could be cast like a spell to heal me. Um, you can get shields that uh, have a lot of extra strength, a lot of extra blocking power, um, and I imagine there's. I know that the developers adding a lot more charms and items, and I imagine there's a lot more in the higher levels that I've never seen as well. So I'm sure there's stuff there, but I don't think there's anything on the level of... Oh, why am I taking so much damage? Um, I don't think there's anything on the level of, uh, like, super mechanically... Oh my god, I'm so bad at this game. Um, big mechanical uh, shifts to be found in these items. I could be wrong. Um, maybe it's just that I haven't been far enough up. I've been about halfway through the game's levels. Um, and like I say, I have enjoyed most of my time with it, um, but... It feels like um, the game feels like it's wants like one more system. Like there's just a, something very small missing. Um, and I think when I was following the game, the way I initially thought it would work would be that these would be procedurally generated floating islands, which they are. Um, but instead of being constructed in this kind of arena-based connected dungeon rooms, I thought it would be this very freeform world of. Uh, Ooh, rum. What does that do? It makes things better, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's a good description. Curved shots. Right, okay. So this is one of the trade-offs. You can see that my shots are now curving, um, which is interesting, but it will make it a lot harder for me to kill certain kinds of enemies. So, yeah, we're, so... Oh, God, okay, I've got another boss. Well, let's let's hold that thought for now while I uh, fight this. Why am I, why am I standing still? I oh I think I lost focus there for some reason. Apologies. I'm probably going to die now as a result. I'm so bad. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Well, I died. Um. Okay. It was a bit unfair on the game there because my window lost focus and so my controls paused. Um. But as you can see, it's spawning these things that have bullets flying around them, and it'll keep spawning more of them unless you kill them. And 
Ah, oh, it's just such a fun ruiner. Um, anyway, I I have enjoyed the game a lot, but um, it feels more of a kind of it feels more of a kind of a distraction rather than a really deep thing that I could get stuck into. Um, even though there's a sense that you get better at the game the more that you play them, I think what it's lacking is a sense of exploration. So in these sections where you go outside of the game. Um, I really get the sense that I'm walking through this weird labyrinth of floating uh, palaces with like little bits of craggy rock like the one in the top right hand corner and uh, destructible bridges and occasionally you're trying to mine out these destroyable tiles and you accidentally shoot the one that you're standing on and you fall down to an unexplored level that you didn't even know was there. And that's when the game's at its best, I think. That's when the game's really exciting. Um, but when you're doing what feels like the main part of the game, when you're just sort of stuck inside in these uh, tiny little rooms, I think it loses that feeling of open air exploration and even the title Path to the Sky was really evocative. I got really excited when I heard it, but um, the way it ended up, I guess I just felt a little bit penned in. Um, whereas Spelunky is really good at making you feel like you're really exploring somewhere, like you're exploring somewhere weird. And actually, I think if the game was more like these open sections, I would love it more than almost any other roguelike um, that I've played. It's It feels so nice to run around these places and burrow through the destructible blocks and find secrets and see the open sky. Um, and then I go indoors into these places, and it's kind of not as fun. Anyway, Path to the Sky. Um, it's probably worth a peek if you like roguelike platformers like me. Um, but it's it's not the it's not the wildest game that I've seen this year, um, and I, I probably won't do another video on it, even though I, I enjoyed it a bunch. I think there's just not enough to say. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I think I have got a couple of videos in the pipeline. I want to do a Moon Hunters video at some point, um, but I'm finding that really hard to do in a Let's Play format, um, as in talk talk while I'm playing. Um, I was also thinking about doing a Hitman one as well, um, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and get one out soon. Thanks very much for watching.